Hello everyone, welcome to another Fusion Friday. This week we're going to talk about main spindle to sub spindle transfers. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So as you can see here, I already have my part file uploaded. Um, this is a part that we started out with. It would have been an op 10 into an op 20. The idea here is that we would just be using a headstock and not a sub spindle of any means. So either that operator is gonna flip this part midway through or you're gonna run all of op one, then reset up the machine to run all of op two. That being said, is due to the addition of a sub spindle, what we could do is we could actually take this slug from op one and transfer that to the sub spindle. And how you do so is actually relatively easy. So again, just to get a reference here, we've already gone through and we have faced, roughed, did a little bit of milling on this part. It's not complete yet. The idea is, is that we just have a couple tool paths so that we can get ready for that sub spindle grab. So let's go ahead and do that sub spindle grab. So we're gonna go to part handling and we're gonna say sub spindle grab. So now some of these settings in here are up to you whether or not you change them and also depends on your machine. One thing for example is, is if your machine does not have synchronization, you could go ahead and stop the spindle when you're making these operations happen. So the idea here is that if you can synchronize the main and sub, you could go ahead and leave that on and give it an RPM. In this case, we're going to actually keep the sub spindle off and we're just going to bring it in and grab onto it. A few other things that you have the ability to do is orientate your spindle based on maybe you have two, three jaws that are not lining up properly. We can actually orientate those to get them to align. This is something I tend to do a little bit more in the controller than I do in the software. And then the last two things are is your feed plane is basically where are you going to rapid your sub spindle to and then your chuck plane is how deep into your part do you want to grab so i may say model front and i want to grab into this part negative one inch which as you can see i'm now sitting up on that shoulder i might actually want to dial that back so in this case i'm going to just grab it by the line and drag it back so in, as we have set here we're going to go 700 deep and grab onto the part. So again, there's not a lot of settings here for all of you. It's relatively easy just to come in, stop the spindle, and we're gonna grab 700 into that part. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now that we've grabbed onto the part, we have to return the part, right? So again, as we can go in and we could say sub spindle return. So what sub spindle return is going to do is it's gonna give you the option to whether you want to unclamp the main or keep both clamped. We're gonna see a scenario later where we're gonna actually keep both clamped, but in this case, we're gonna unclamp the primary spindle. So the idea is, is we're releasing the part, and then with releasing the part, we actually wanna send the machine possibly all the way back to the machine position, which would be home, or we could actually stay several inches out from that position, depending on what you're doing. So the nice thing is that you have multiple places that you could put this, you could bring it back, you can move it forward. I like to send mine usually to the machine position because that's a known position in the home position and then bring it forward as needed. So again, relatively simple to set up this main spindle, sub spindle grab when it comes to the operation. And again, we're in work offset one in our primary spindle, right? So that being said, when it comes to now dealing with the sub spindle operations, I do need to go in and I need to edit my setup. And the few things I need to change is one, I need to go from primary to secondary spindle. The other thing I need to change is in my post side, I like to make this a different offset. So my sub spindle is G55, my main spindle is G54. So again, at a very quick walkthrough, all we're doing is going in and grabbing based on that 700 onto the end of our part. We're releasing the head and we're returning the actual tailstock. And then we can go in and start our operations on the backside of our part to rough out the rest of this part and clean it up. 
So let's look at another scenario now, right? So let's say we're bar feeding something. So in the scenario of bar feeding, actually, we'll, we'll take a step back here. So we set this up again to be a hand flipped part mid operation, right? Do one side, do our roughing, finishing, grooving for that thread and threading it. And then it flips over or it goes to a second machine to start on the back side. Again, we don't have all the milling in here. Maybe the machine doesn't have live tooling. That's okay. We're putting it on a fourth axis or something else. But the key element is still the same, right? This time we want to come in and we actually want to grab part off and return. So let's set that up. So we're going to go to our turning tab. And again, we're going to do our sub spindle grab. I'm going to go ahead and say stop the spindle. And then from there, we're going to come in and we want to grab at a known location. So I'm just going to actually drag this line back. And I like to measure it again from model front. And we're going to grab so far in. So we're actually almost three and a half inches in. We probably could sneak three and a half. We can. So again, we set up that grab. We're three and a half inches in from the front of the model. So keep that in mind. Or if you wanted to be a little more technical with it, you could actually say stock front, since that's where our G54 is. We're three and a half inches in to make life easy. So now that we've grabbed the part, let's do our part off operation. And this is the most important part of this based on your machine. So one thing to keep in mind, I'm just going to leave everything default and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a visual, right? So I have my part off operation, and I am also trying to grab this far in. So as you notice, that tool comes to this position. Well, Fusion is smart enough to know that it needs to bring this tool in before it comes and grabs the part. The problem we have is it doesn't think that, oh, it's in the way. So we need to change our actual starting location of that part off tool so that our sub spindle doesn't come in and grab it and get in the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the part off tool path and in our linking section, we could actually tell it to go from the first point and the last point. So as you can see now, it has changed my lead in lead out and brought my tool all the way to this position so that when we now bring in that sub spindle, and again, it's going to look a little funky because the part off is after the grab, but Fusion will move that tool into its first location prior to. But again, we're coming in, we're grabbing, we're not having any clearance issues with that tool. And now we do our part off cycle. And after our part off cycle, again, we do our sub spindle return. This time we're gonna keep both of these clamped. Again, you don't want the main spindle to open up that's still holding onto the bar while your sub spindle is just holding onto the part. We actually wanna keep both clamped because we've now cut them apart using a parting operation. And again, I'm going to go ahead and send mine back to the machine position. And just like before, I'm going to go into my OP20 or my sub spindle work now. And I'm going to go ahead and make my couple of changes, right? So we're going to say, again, we're now on the secondary spindle. Let's go ahead and swap this out for G55. Actually, that would be number two offset and hit OK. So this is what it takes to basically do your main spindle to sub spindle transfers. I know a lot of you out there are probably going to ask that question. What if I want to use my sub spindle to do a bar pull? Well, that is a time for another conversation. But if you are one of our customers or if you're not, you're welcome to download our plugin down below. You can also actually go in and use our ticket system and put in a ticket system. And I'm more than happy to show you how to make a bar pull or a actual sub spindle grab pull out main spindle clamp part off operation. As always, it's Friday. You guys have fun. See you next Friday.